These guys are basically running from tension. They're running from the very thing that creates attraction. They're actually trying to get rid of it. They're trying to reduce it. They're trying to get it down to a minimum amount. When I was a child, there was so much tension in my house from a chaotic mother that was bipolar, that was screaming and yelling all the time that I just had to figure out how to get rid of the tension. Who do I need to be today like a chameleon to keep her calm? And I felt that if I could keep her calm, I could keep the peace, I would be happy, she would be happy. So I became a master chameleon of who do you need me to be? Who do you need me to be? Who do you need me to be? In order to have an amazing life. That was my thought. Like if I do this really well, we'll all have an amazing life. But in that, I never discovered who I was. I never discovered what I liked. I never discovered what I wanted. The only time I was happy was when I was making somebody else happy. When I was getting rid of the tension, and somebody else felt calm and I got rid of their stress. And this is a horrible formula for success in life. This is a horrible formula for like a CEO of a company. It can't make people happy all the time. If he's chasing this idea of being comfortable all the time, he's never going to be successful because real success happens in the discomfort. Real success happens in the tension. Like real relationships grow through rupture and repair, through us having a disagreement, getting in the middle of it, diving in really deep and then creating a resolution together, what the moment needs, not what you need or what I need, for us to grow out the other side, for us to come out the other side and be really happy together. And then if we do this through a lifetime, we actually get stronger and stronger and stronger and we begin to know each other better. And that requires tension, that requires authenticity, that requires me knowing myself. And that's something I've never really said in these videos is that if I don't know myself, I can't be authentic with you, I can't be real with you. If I don't know myself, I can't connect with you and go deep with you. If I don't know myself, I can't look at you and have you feel into me and understand me. I'll just constantly be trying to manipulate you. I think I'm just trying to make you happy and I think I'm just making you happy, but in reality, I'm lying to you because I'm not giving you my real self. I'm just giving you a chameleon. Who do you want me to be? And that's what we want to break here today. So we're going to go through four things that you really need to do to let go of the outward attachment that's holding you back and to break the nice guy so you can start to really figure out who you are to become the best version of yourself. So we're going to go into that right now. The first thing I want to talk about today is being nice to a fault and this vampiric energy that nice guys have. The nice guys are basically vampires. They suck off the energy of other people. They feed off the energy of other people. Their happiness comes from feeding on other people. In other words, if I'm going to sit here and I'm going to figure out who you need me to be, or I'm going to fix your life, or I'm going to tell you how your life should be because I don't want to focus on my life because it sucks so much. But if I focus on you, I'm doing something good. And if I make you happy by doing that and I get rid of all the tension and I calm, then I get everything I want. I get validated. I feel good. I'm feeding on validation from you. And that makes me feel good inside. Now I'm happy. And if you were to ask a nice guy, what makes them happy to say, oh, I like making other people happy. When they smile, I feel really good. And they mean it. And it's true because that is their source of happiness. They have no other source of happiness. But the opposite is true too. When they don't make other people happy, they feel miserable inside. They feel horrible inside. If they don't go out and take care of other people, they get depressed. They get sad because they don't know how to be with themselves. They don't know how to date themselves. So they're literally feeding off the energy of other people. Now there's another side to this. When you fed off the energy of people a lot and it doesn't work because it never does, ultimately in the end it fails you, then you have to run and be alone for a while to recover from the failure. And this is really common. Nice guys lean towards, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of you. And then eventually, oh, you don't want me to take care of you? Well, fuck you. I'm going to go be alone for a while and not call you back. And I'm going to disappear on everybody. I'm going to go do my own thing, but they don't say fuck you. They just disappear. And then they call back a week later wanting more energy because now they're drained. They need more energy again. They haven't had enough in a while. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I was super stressed. Oh, I had so much going on. I was tired. You know, I just had this, that, and the other, and you know, and, I, and I'm back now. Now they're repairing 
from the guilt they feel for disappearing on you, they're trying to repair it and rebond, re, re enmesh with the nice guy again and say, let's re enmesh so I can feed on you again. And it sucks, doesn't it? Now, I'm not saying the nice guy doesn't have good intentions, he does, but he just doesn't see all this going on, right? Underneath the surface. And if you were to take away and put a nice guy in a, in a room by himself and he had to live alone, at first that might be the worst experience of his life if he's used to being enmeshed all the time. But then there's the other side of the nice guy, which if they've gotten older now, and now they're used to being alone more than enmeshed because enmeshed has never worked. Maybe the first 30 years of their life, the enmeshment didn't work. And now they just, I just want to be alone all the time. And if you can see that, you can start to break it. The first step to breaking this first one is you've got to get to know yourself. You got to fall in love with you and surrendering to this idea of what do I like? And that's the hardest thing for nice guys to do because when I was a nice guy and I found this with most of my clients, they don't know what they really like without people. They don't know what they really like unless other people are involved, unless they're showing something to other people making other people happy. They don't know how to be with themselves, be alone and just be happy. They don't know how to be happy taking out the trash. They don't know how to be happy just watching a sunset by themselves. But when you start to master that skill of dating you, then everything changes. And when you get a group of friends, they can see your nice guy, know what the nice guy is and won't let you play that game with them and make you take care of you, it even gets better. And that, that finding that first group of friends that you can actually go out with that won't let you play this codependent game with them can be a huge step in the right direction. Okay, let's take a look at, at number two. So number two is there's nobody there for her to date. When the nice guy dates, there's nobody there for her to date. Maybe at first he seems sweet, he seems nice. But in reality, since you don't know yourself as a nice guy and you get all your validation from the other people, you have no sense of internal value. You can't feel your own heart. You can't feel your own gut. You can't feel your, your own self-love. You can't, you don't know what you want. Who is she dating? She's not dating anybody that has any wants, needs, and desires of his own other than what makes her happy. And that in turn makes her unhappy. That in turn, it's like, why am I out with you? What do you like to do? What do you want to do? Well, nice guy holds back, doesn't want to say. Maybe they do have a few things they like. They do in private, but they just, she might not like them. She might disagree with me. I, 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 gotta, I gotta figure out who she is first and then adjust everything I say to make sure that it doesn't upset her. Get rid of the tension, say it just perfect. So then you might share with her one thing you really do like, but you might be really careful as you share it first because you don't want to get her upset. Really touchy, really gentle, like I'll say it just like this. But in that, you sound tentative. Your presuppositions imply that what I like isn't good enough. It's bad. It's wrong. And then she hears that and she responds in kind, especially if she's in her feminine. She's going to hear that and say, hear the part of you that that's even judging yourself. And then she's going to unconsciously naturally get the desire to poke at that, just like your guy friends would. You got to get to know yourself so she has somebody to relate to. Somebody that has real opinions that can say no, they can say, I like this, I like that. Oh my God, it's so cool. Like auto racing, I'm really into auto racing. What are you into? Or I'm really into, I don't know, going to the gym. Like for, for example, that could be a huge one too because these will then allow you to find a woman that truly likes what you like instead of trying to be everything to everybody, which is what burns the nice guy out and makes him want to go hide. And then the nice guy doesn't understand why every woman gets unattracted to him. Because when there's nobody there to date, he's also afraid to create any tension with her. He's afraid to challenge her. He's afraid to ask her questions about what she likes in a, in a challenging way that, that stimulates a little bit of tension. He's afraid to poke at her. He's afraid to tease because all of this might upset her just for the sheer fact that this could upset her. I got to get rid of it. But then you're just boring. You're not teasing. You're not playing. You're not challenging and you're not sharing anything deep. What has she got left? But to move on and say, oh, another nice guy. And in the dating part, I want to add one thing is that a lot of women often end up dating a nice guy at some point in their life. 
sometimes for a while, often happens after dating a bad boy. Somebody who wasn't afraid, who, who knew what he wanted, but was a little cocky, a little arrogant, maybe dated him, dumped him, broke up with him, played with him, and they maybe had some wild sex with the bad boy. Maybe they got really turned on, they got attached to the bad boy, but they got their heart broken. And oftentimes without realizing it, when their heart's healing, they pick the nice guy because he'll take care of her. Even though he's boring, he'll make her feel safe for a while while she heals. But then she usually ends up leaving the nice guy because after a while, as she starts to heal, it's just not there. He's so sweet, he's so nice, and she wants to move on. Now, there is a third type of guy uh, that is more power, that's a combination, and I'll kind of end on that in a little bit. Okay. And number three, one of the things that really upsets women when you start to date nice guys, especially if she ends up with a nice guy for a while, is that she has to take on the masculine. The nice guy is so afraid to upset her, he doesn't take the leadership role. He doesn't set boundaries, he doesn't say no, he doesn't say, this is a great place I wanna to go to dinner, Here, here's the vacation, here's the plans I've made, let's go do this, and really take that container role so she can be feminine, so she can let go of control, so she can be in her feminine for you, dance for you, flow for you, be your art, and then give you everything that comes with that from this, her sexual energy to her turned on energy and then really take her radiance and put it into you because you created a container for her to put it into. And she can't do that. So she has to go into her masculine, turn off half of her feminine. And in dating, she doesn't want to do that if she's feminine at all. She wants to be your feminine. She wants to be it for you. So it frustrates her. It frustrates the hell out of her that you keep taking that away from her because she wants to do it for you and then give you all the awesome rewards that come with it from her femininity to amazing sex. So in turn, she doesn't get turned on. She doesn't want to have sex with you. She doesn't want to be with you because ultimately she has to do your job for you. And if you look at this at a deeper level, I, I talked about this with you guys last night, is imagine a woman getting ready to go out on a date. She takes an hour and then you take an hour and a half because you're competing with her feminine. That really frustrates her. And then you got the other side, which is imagine a woman always taking away your masculine role. You know, you're driving the car, she's telling you how to drive, where to go, what to do. It's frustrating to you. But if you're not showing up, if you're not sure where you should go and you're constantly looking at her for, for approval and asking her subtly through your presuppositions, through your subcommunication, is this good? Am I doing it right? Yeah, she is going to take control and she's going to emasculate you because you're asking her to through your subcommunication. And a lot of nice guys do this and then they get upset later because she did what they asked them to do. Now, I'm not saying there aren't women that won't emasculate, try to emasculate you anyways, but if you're really a solid masculine guy, you probably won't let that happen. Or you'll move on, you'll lose interest in her. And just be like, hey, there's somebody else out there for me. Okay. So let's take a look at number four. She does not feel safe. If you've got a nice guy who doesn't know who he is, is afraid of tension, won't step into tension because he doesn't want to get disapproved of, doesn't want to upset anybody because he's terrified of emotions, because all his life he was in his childhood, he was probably like my, my mother being bipolar attacked, and I learned to calm people the moment there's tension in an environment, he's gonna be uncomfortable. He's not gonna like it. He's gonna to wanna to get rid of it. And how is she ever to feel safe with you as a man? How is she gonna feel safe with you in a dark alley? Will you actually show up? She doesn't know. You might, you might be the nice guy that can turn it off when there's a life-threatening situation going on, when there's something serious. But if you're not, and she's wrong, she's screwed in those situations. See, the part of her DNA is to find a man that can make her feel safe because she is literally the physically weaker sex. She can't fight off most men. She can't deal with some of these physically difficult situations throughout history. That hasn't left her in modern society just because we have a modern society now. That's still inside of her. So you will probably never have to fully activate your warrior, right? But if she feels that you can bring it when you need to, or you can handle difficult situations, you can even stand up to the waiter, you can stand up to your mom, you can stand up to her. 
then she's going to trust you 10 times more. If you can say no to her, set boundaries with her, say not right now, and you could do it with your heart open in a calm, centered way, then you're even more attractive. You're more powerful. You're more solid. And then she can relax into you more as her masculine and then become more feminine for you and give you all those feminine qualities that feed you to go out and battle the world. Man, if you come home, all the most successful men in the world have these really feminine women at home that feed them. They get filled up with it like fuel and then they're driven for the next day. They're driven to go out and create more because their gas tank's full every day. Imagine you had a really feminine woman that loved and respected your masculine, right? That looked at your masculine like it was something to be revered and she just wanted to give you her feminine because it was so masculine every night she holds you and cuddles with you and gives you all that feminine while you sleep right she she believes in you you're her hero how would you feel the next day going to work how would you feel the next day getting up you'd want to go back you'd want to protect her and battle the world for her but if you're a nice guy as soon as there's tension ah uh, and and she has to turn on her masculine again and boom she doesn't feel safe, so she's got to do something. And then it's gone again. And yet that slowly starts killing the relationship. By the way, I used to be a huge nice guy. I destroyed every relationship I was in because of this stuff. Okay. Let's look at number five, the last one on this list. Probably, for some of you guys, the most important one. Um, for nice guys, the intimacy is terrible because she can't surrender to her feminine and polarize you into your masculine as much as she tries to polarize you into your masculine to take that masculine role you won't do it so she can't surrender to her feminine and because of that you got terrible intimacy deep connection where you feel really loved and terrible sex the sex can suck compared to when you really polarize between the masculine and the feminine the sex goes through the roof the sex is amazing she wants to do things with you that she's never done with any other man if you can truly be her masculine, she wants to go surrender to you. She wants you to claim her. She wants you to take her because she can fully trust your masculine to show up. She can trust your masculine to go right to the edge of her limits, feel her and feel that's my edge without even saying a word and then play on that edge and back off, which for her means my man can feel into me so deep. He knows what I feel almost before I do. And that's fucking sexy. That's fucking hot. And that's when she'll start doing things with you that she's never done with any other man. She'll want, and she'll want to do it all the time. But if you're a nice guy and you keep taking that opportunity for her to be more feminine away from you, her desire for sex gets less and less and less because a real woman's desire for sex and her desire to give you femininity has to, is equal to how much you make her feel safe and contained and led when she's in her feminine. This doesn't mean she doesn't go to the office and go into her masculine and become the CEO of a company, but in her relationship, if she's truly feminine, and most women are, she really wants that polarization. That's what makes her surrender. That's what makes her go into this amazing orgasmic sex with you. That's what makes her have so much pleasure with you. And when you're that guy that can do these things with women, it's kind of wild how it makes you feel again it fills you up with that juice and because you're so comfortable with tension you will explore all kinds of wild stuff you wouldn't normally explore because the nice guy is terrified to take risks in sex the nice guy is terrified because what if she doesn't like it what if i at tell her about this and she doesn't want to do it what if she gets offended by my sexual desires i'm just going to keep it super basic and boring it's not what he's thinking of course he's thinking I'm going to keep it super basic or he's going to read every book on sex he can find to please her, not himself. And then he's going to try to do it all perfectly analytically from his head to please her so he can get her validation. So he feels good. And she feels that she feels the animal nature of the technique nature of his sex. He's not surrendering to his own animalistic desire with her in time with her. He's doing something to her. So she'll say, good job, honey. And in the end, he feels like shit again. She feels like shit again. And it ends up dying. This is why nice guys are anything but nice. Because at the core of this, it's all about manipulation. It's all about control. It's all about me getting validation out of you, getting what I want through covert contracts. 
And if you're doing this with women in relationships, you're doing this everywhere, in your business life, in many other areas of your life, most likely. And it's probably costing you zeros off your income. It's probably costing you really good guy friends that would really stand up for you and be there for you. It would, it's probably costing you a lot of things. So this is something you definitely want to take a deeper look at. So with all of this going on inside of us, me included, I was probably the biggest nice guy I've ever known. Um, it's no wonder we're so unhappy, don't know what we want, don't know who we are. I did not know anything I wanted. I didn't know anything. I, did, I, I had no clue who I was, what I liked, what, what I wanted. I was just constantly chasing validation from the world. And when I didn't get it, I just wanted to hide and I would burned out. I had a horrible sex life. Sex started to feel like a job. I didn't even want to have sex anymore because the sex itself was work. I, if I didn't please her perfectly and I felt like she had any doubt about the sex, I just felt bad afterwards. So why have sex? And I started to check out in life. I started to pull back. I started to do less. And that really sucked. And it wasn't until I stopped and started to get to know me that everything changed. That's when... A, I got pretty good with women and I was dating, but I wasn't happy because I was date. I was getting a lot of women, but I had this perfect, I had this nice guy with the veneer of the confident guy over the top that was faked. And I was, I had a character running on top of my nice guy to be cool because I figured out as a nice guy that if I do these things, I can get women. But in the end, I was miserable because the nice guy was still running underneath and the relationships didn't go any deeper. They went to a certain level and stopped. You know, I figured out if I just this much tension, I like to just this much, if I, if I set a boundary here, not because I wanted to, but because that's what I'm supposed to do. If I take her to dinner here and pick this perfect restaurant, I'll create the perfect container because that's the perfect thing to do, but not because I wanted to. And I started to become the character of a bad boy, but it really wasn't a bad boy because I wasn't feeling it. I was faking it. And so I'd get a certain degree of woman that was at a certain level of confidence. By the way, the more confident, open women could see through it. And my life started to suck, really suck even more. So I stopped. I let all the women go. Because if I didn't have a woman over every night to have sex with, I felt horrible. I needed that validation. And when I stopped and just spent some time with myself, I went into depression. And so I started dating me. I started learning to love me. I started taking me on trips. Then I found guy friends that wouldn't put up with my nice guy bullshit and could see through it. And my life started to change radically. And then when I, the first woman I started to date, when I came back, this amazing woman that walked in the laundry room in my apartment, when I started, it's time to date again, walked in there just out of nowhere, screamed and jumped out of the laundry room because my dog barked at her. And I said, my dog won't bite. She came in, became my next girlfriend. This amazing, beautiful, sweeter than any woman I'd ever dated in my life. I was shocked at the difference in women that came into my life. The women I was meeting, the connections with my friends. Because I wasn't worried about making them happy, I had built a relationship with me inside. Learned to let them see my vulnerabilities as well as my ability to say no, set boundaries. Say, this is what I like. I'm going to go do this. Do you want to come along? Suddenly... It just changed everything. These women started to show up that had somebody they could connect to, to relate to. Friends started to show up. People started to show up. And my whole life began to change. That's when I began to become financially successful. That's when I began to become happier. That's when I began to have better sex, amazing sex that blew my mind. I didn't even know that was possible at that point. And every woman I dated after that, even after me and her ended it, was... I don't know if it was the women or me, but it was 10 times better than anything I had before. Connections, depth, feeling. And I really realized that beyond the nice guy is a whole realm of possibilities out there. Freedom, happiness, and joy. So I want to present one thing. There's this idea. In 1797, there's a book called Metaphysics on Morals and um, by Immanuel Kant. And he said, know thyself, right? And know thyself. Is, is a really powerful thing. And that's what the nice guy doesn't do. He doesn't know thyself. And the path to happiness is knowing thyself. And when you think about that, 
It's an ethical commandment. And I read this somewhere, and I wish I could quote the person that said this other part, but I, I can't right now. But it's an ethical commandment to know one's own heart and to understand the motives behind one's actions in order to harmonize one's will with duty. Think about that for a minute. I'll read it again. An ethical commandment to know one's own heart and to understand the motives behind one's actions in order to harmonize one's will with one's duty. And when you know yourself, in that sentence I just said, you can feel the tension in it. You can feel that you will be stepping into tension. But the difference is, as a man, you're built to love stepping into tension. It's built to drive you. It's built to actually get you sexually turned on to step into tension. And when you start to experience that, because you know yourself, you're no longer know what you know what you want. You're no longer afraid to step into tension. You're going to go after your dreams. You're going to go after your passions. You're going to penetrate the world, fuck the world open, and create reality, recreate reality through transmutation. That's when your life will begin to take off, and that's when you will live a passionate life. So. With all that said, I did say there's a third type of guy. You know, we've got all these bad boys in the world and we've got nice guys. And honestly, there's reasons both of them fail. And the third type of guy is a nice guy that is nice by choice because he likes being nice, not because he has to, because he could just as easily say no to you. He could just as easily break up with you. He could just as easily get in your face and tell you something you need to hear. But he's nice because he chooses to because he loves you, because he wants you to experience the best, not because he needs validation from you. And that type of nice guy is a whole different type of nice guy. When you can say no, when you can set boundaries, you are powerful. When you can break up with somebody because, let's say you both love each other, but you're destructive together. And you can say, you know what, we don't work. I love you and the best thing I can do for you is end this relationship. You're a whole nother breed of nice guy. You're a nice guy that can step into tension. You're a nice guy that's bringing love to a situation that some people wouldn't consider loving. He just broke up with me, but he did it because he didn't want to waste your time or his time anymore. And that is the type of nice guy you should become. You should become the type of nice guy that knows himself, know thyself, that's not afraid to say no, that knows what he wants. And then on top of that, even beyond that, has a purpose greater than himself and greater than the people around him. And he doesn't turn on that purpose. He doesn't walk away from it. He says when he's in a relationship with a beautiful woman, what does this relationship need? Is it what I want? Is it what she wants? Or is it something greater than both of us? And he's not afraid to step into that because his purpose, his passion is greater than all of that. And that's how he earns respect. That's how he earns self-love. That's how he creates the best life possible because when you do that and you step into those moments they always transmute into something even better something more beautiful and when you experience that two three four five times that process of i don't want to do this but i'm going to step into that tension i'm going to own it fully like a man with her with the moment with my business and you see it turn into something better because you fully owned it three four five times you're going to want to do it all the time you're going to realize that's the true path to happiness and success. You'll be stepping into these unknown territories. You're like, I don't know what's going to happen, but now I know something exciting is coming. Let's see what happens next. And that is the, the path out of the nice guy into, you could say the real guy, the nice guy that is real, that is honest, that's powerful, that has a little bit of the bad boy in him. So that's really what I want to present. Hopefully you guys like this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the camera and I'm just going to have a, a private Q&A discussion with the guys in the room about this. And if for those of you online, if you want to put a comment in the video, I'll check out the comments. I'll be answering your comments, but it's time for me to work with the uh, clients in the room. Remember, only the confident really live.